Jim here. Let me see if y'all can see me. How's it going? What I want to do first is take you through what our focus is in September. So, hey Wilson, hey Debbie. What I have in front of me is a 24, 24 inches high and 12 inches wide um, canvas. So, I took your information that you um, shared with me in, in the poll on the Facebook page. And I knew that the first painting that you guys wanted was something to do with um, like a fall scene with hay in the fields and all that kind of stuff. So what I did was I started um, looking on Pinterest. I started looking on Google Images. I started looking at where I live and taking some pictures just out here because we are we have hay bales all over the place in Montana right now in the open land and um, we are a huge state in uh, you know farmland and ranches so I just started taking all of those ideas it took me about two weeks and I just started compiling 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 and I actually even wrote down a list on a piece of paper, some of the things that I knew that I wanted to include in this series. So I want to talk to you a little bit about what you can do to create a series on your own, not just follow me, but maybe you want to create a series for yourself um, that has, has a different theme. And so what is the thought process that you have to go through to do something like this? So my initial thought process was first, I need to start getting some, I'm a very visual person. So I needed to start getting some, some examples of pictures in my head so that I could maybe piece them together. And I have shown you before and I just actually put the, um, the link. After I compiled all of these pictures together and I came up with a theme, um, how do you come up with a theme? Well, you decide, okay, what is it that you want to paint? Does it, it has to have some cohesiveness. So I'm going to be painting. I decided I have three of these. So I'm going to be painting on three 24 by 12s. Um, a series can be anywhere from three paintings to an infinite number of paintings. It's totally up to you. You can make the decision up front how many paintings you want it to be, or you can just let it create itself as you go through your art journey. It may take you two years to create a series. Um, it may take you two weeks. It just depends on what your focus is. I am the type of painter where most of the time, I'm the type of thinker. My mind works in a way where once I put my mind to something, Everything else gets grayed out, and my focus is on that one thing. So that's why when I decided to create a series, I decided I'm going to create the whole thing, bam, 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 one after another. So what I'm doing this month with you is I'm trying to help you learn how to create a series for yourself. And we're going to do three different series. We're going to do this one, which is the three um, pieces. We're going to do another one, which is going to be um, four or five, and it's going to be some small pieces. We'll talk about that later. And then the third one we're going to do is our next pop-up paint party, which is going, going to take place in October. So my focus right now for the next four weeks or so is going to be on helping you learn how to create a series and how a series is created. Um, at least my journey. So once I created and I got all of these pictures together, I knew that I wanted to paint on 12 by 24s, but I didn't want to start just straight on the canvas. I wanted to do some sketching first. So I took my, um, my handy dandy multimedia pad and I wanted to scale my papers on my multimedia pad to the same dimensions and the same scale as my three canvases that I'm going to be using. So these are professional grade canvases. 
So I knew that when I was going to paint on them, you know, they're, they're, um, they're thick. I knew that when I was going to paint on them, I, I want it to be something that's worth hanging up, you know, something that's nice. So I took my multimedia pad. I tore out three pages and a multimedia pad is like, it's close. I took my ruler. It's close to this one I have is nine by 12, I think. Yeah, it's nine by 12. So I knew that the length was 12, but the size that I was going to be painting on my canvas was 24. So I said, okay, if I'm going to have the same dimensions and this paper is 12 inches long, but what I'm eventually going to be painting on is 24 inches long, then I took half of the width as well. So the width of the canvas is 12 inches. So the width of the paper that I needed to use to do my sketches had to be six inches. So I cut those three pieces of paper into six inches wide and 12 inches long. They were already 12 inches long. So I hope that makes sense. So basically each one of these pieces of paper is, um, I guess you could say half the size of what I'm really going to be painting on. Okay, so I took these three pieces of paper and I said to myself, I want to have a cohesive painting that within those three paintings, I want it, if I put them next to each other, it actually looks like a whole painting. But if I look at one individually by itself, it's also a painting by itself. So you have the option of um, either selling the pieces as one off. I could sell like just this one piece by itself. I could sell just this one piece by itself. Or I could sell just this one piece by itself. Or if someone likes the whole series, then of course you can sell all three pieces together or maybe just two pieces whatever so um what i did was i cut my pages into six by twelve and then i took these pages they were blank they had nothing on them i took them and i taped them down next to each other i'm going to show you right here so i'm just going to turn them over and show you what i did i took them actually i put them on this table and i took them and I taped them down. Can y'all see that? Yeah, you can. Okay, so I took some tape and I taped them across the top and across the bottom. Because my series that I wanted to create first, I wanted it to look like one whole picture, but I wanted it to be in three separate pieces. So when I created the picture, I actually sketched out the cow. I took all of my pictures from my phone that I had and I just like scrolled through them. And on my phone, I had a cow that I really liked. So I took the cow and I drew him on my painting. I made the, um, like the, the background where all the trees were. I made sure that when I drew it, I drew it like all the way across. And that's why I taped them all down. So that the seam of all of the trees followed each other the whole way. Okay, and then I knew that I wanted my barn to be by itself on one. That was actually the hardest part was to get my barn on that one skinny piece because a barn, you know, is a barn. It's, it requires a lot of room. Usually a barn is like really wide and big. So as you can see, I started drawing the barn. It didn't work out. So I turned it over. I painted on this piece of paper like eight times before I got my barn to look like I wanted it to look. And I just kept on painting over it and over and over it. So that was my process through the whole thing. So after I, I sketched it all out, I took my paints out and I took just a bunch of cheap paints. I took all my paints out and I just started painting on top of it. And I kept it all taped together. So I painted this as one painting, not as three but I just had those cuts in between them and I made sure that visually I want everything. I didn't want the cow to be half on one sheet and half on the other because 
that just wouldn't look right. So I needed to make sure that the barn was by itself on one sheet, not attached to the other sheet. And I needed to make sure that the cow was by itself on one sheet, not attached to the others. But the hay bales could kind of be sprinkled in all three because the hay bales were not um, necessary for any of the other pieces in that particular one of three, if that makes sense. So that is the process that I use to come up with my series. Now, something that I want to tell you about a series. Your series, like the next series that we do, they're not going to be required to hang next to each other to make a whole painting. So another series that you can do is, like I'm going to do um, starting next week, I think. Yeah, we're going to go live to the public. And we're going to do small, we're probably going to do them like on just little small canvases like this. This is a 6x6. Six six. I might do an 8x8 eight because eight I just bought a huge batch of 8x8 eight eight canvases. And they're all going to have the same color scheme. We're going to stick to like the fall colors. But each one is going to be its own. It can be hung by itself or it can be, you can put them all over your house. So my, my vision for these is they're going to have like flowers in the corners and in the middle is going to be like a little, um, we're going to do like a calligraphy. We're going to write something and I'm focusing on like all hymns. So all of the flowers will have the same color scheme. All of the backgrounds will probably have the same background. Each one will have a different verse and the flower paintings will be different on all of them but they'll still have a common like they might all have the same rows in all of them you know what I'm saying so that's going to be a series that does not require them to be attached together they're all going to be by themselves but it's going to be very obvious that they are all created by the same artist and um that they were all created kind of with the same theme in mind, the same color scheme in mind, you know, that kind of stuff. So you can, you can take a painting that you've done already and you can pull it back up, like maybe my sunflower, okay? And I could say, maybe in a couple of months, I want to add another painting to this painting. So I might want to continue on with the same background, but instead of a sunflower, I might want to do a daisy or, um, you know, I might want to do a different flower. That in itself can be another theme or series by itself. What helps for it to be a series also is all of the paintings to be the same size. So you don't want to make one this size and then another smaller and bigger. You want them all to be the same size. That's something that I've seen in all of the studies I've done with creating series and collections. You may hear them called collections as well. Um, those are really, uh, really important. Something that I learned about series is when I first started my Etsy shop and I started painting, um, one of the things that was highly suggested, if you were going to start a business, which I know some of you are interested in doing that, is you don't release your pieces one-off. You don't post it and say, here, this is for sale, this is for sale, this is for sale. You create an atmosphere of this is what's coming. I am working on a collection. And usually you have about 10 pieces to make a collection. And you want that collection to have a common commonality in some way. Whether it's a holiday that's common in all of the pieces, whether it's the color scheme you use in all of the pieces, um, whether it is, uh, what are other things? It, it can all be a, a, a collection of all flowers. It could be a collection of all landscapes. So it has to have some commonality in it if you're going to create some type of collection or some type of series. And it's better to release the entire series at one time after it's all completed 
than it is to just one off release and release because it, it it doesn't make it cohesive if you just throw a painting out there and say, oh, this is for sale, this is for sale, this is for sale. So I am not showing you an example of that because I have gotten away from that um, through the whole business thing that I'm doing. I'm really not releasing any collections right now, but it is so much fun to create a collection and work on it for two or three months and then release it all at one time. And so what happens is when you do that, it creates this, um, your, your customers get excited and they can't wait for the day to open where they get to see all of your pieces. Think about how Apple does it or how Nike does it or any of those places. They let you know, they give you little, little snippets and they let you know, hey, this is coming, this is coming. You know, so it um, it grows your uh, following and it makes it a lot of fun. So anyway, that's just some things that I wanted to share with you when it comes to series. Um, my focus right now is not, it should be, but my focus is not on creating collections. My focus is more on teaching right now. So um, that's why I've kind of gotten away from that. But it's a really, really great practice if you are ever interested in doing something like that. So 